Okay, here we're going to do one more example of a little uh, partial fractions problem. So, uh, I shouldn't say little, right? They're a little bit long is what they can be. So, uh, so here we're going to integrate x squared plus 2 over x plus 3 times x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is our little partial fraction decomposition. So I believe x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1 would factor as x squared plus 1 times another x squared plus 1. So we can write that as x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So now we'll have to do our partial fraction decomposition. So we would have x plus 3. We'll have a little a on top of there. We would have x squared plus 1. And then we would have an x squared plus 1 quantity squared. So let's see, um, in the numerator we'll have a linear term, so bx plus c, and then uh, we'll have yet another uh, you know, linear term, so dx plus e. So again, kind of the uh, tedious thing here is going to be getting rid of, or eventually just figuring out the constants, the a, the b, and the c. So again, we would multiply both sides by the denominator uh, x plus 3 times x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And if we do that, on the left side when we multiply by all of this, it'll all cancel out, so we'll just be left with the numerator, x squared plus 2. And again, when we distribute this stuff to the right side, uh, the x plus 3 will cancel out on the first term, so we'll be left with a times x squared plus 1 quantity squared. Then we'll have our bx plus c, Again, we'll multiply by x squared plus 1, or excuse me, uh, when we multiply by x plus 3 times x squared plus 1 squared, the one of the x squared plus 1's will cancel out. So we'll be left with x plus 3 times x squared plus 1. And then for our very last term, when we distribute all of this stuff to the, uh, you know, the stuff on the right, the x squared plus 1 squareds will cancel, so we'll be left with dx plus e times uh, x plus 3. So I think that looks okay here. Oh, so now, again, we've got to figure out our constants. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to uh, figure out, uh, you can always get rid of the linear terms. So I'm going to plug in x equals negative 3. So on the left, if we plug in negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, plus 2 is 11. Um, on the right side, again, we'll get negative 3 squared, which is 9 plus 1, that would be 10 squared. Notice the middle term is going to become a 0 because of the negative 3. So will the last term also, we'll get a 0. So um, it looks like we have 11, uh, this is 10 squared is 100, so it looks like 11 over 100 will be our value for A. Now to figure out the rest of them, again, this is where I'm going to do the equating coefficients. and. Again, this is going to be kind of a, a long process in this case. So, all right, so if we multiply out the right side, I'm probably not going to be able to put it all in the same line. Let's see. Um, if we multiply out x squared plus 1 squared, again, we just get x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1. So we would have an a times x to the 4th. Again, we would have a 2x squared. It's what we had at the very beginning. Uh, we would have a 2x squared times a. So we would get 2ax squared. Then we would have a plus 1 times a. I'm going to do the next ones in a few, uh, a few steps. So we've got bx plus c. When we distribute here, we would have x to the third um, plus, it looks like, x plus 3x squared and then plus 3. And then when we multiply out, uh, let's see, the last term, we'll have a dx squared plus 3d times x plus e times x plus 3 times e. So let's keep, uh, keep multiplying things out here. So ax to the fourth plus 2ax squared plus a. Here, okay, we're going to have to do, again, a lot of distributing. So bx times x cubed will give us a bx to the fourth. Uh, bx times x will give us a bx squared. bx times 3x squared is going to give us a 3bx 
to the third, and then bx times 3 will give us a 3b times x, plus, now let's distribute the c, we'll have cx squared plus cx plus uh, 3cx squared, and then plus 3 times c. Oh, and then we still have all this other stuff, so plus dx squared plus 3dx plus ex plus 3e. So, all right, we're having, we're having fun, I can tell. Uh, I'm going to do sort of the equating coefficients and everything at one, uh, you know, one step. So it looks like we've got an x to the fourth term and an x to the fourth term. I don't see any other x to the fourth terms. So when we factor out the x to the fourth, we would be left with an a plus b. There's zero x to the fourths on the left side, so we would get a plus b equals zero. So let's see, that takes care of that one and that one. Let's see, if we factor out the x to the third, let's look at those, we would have a 3b. Um, so that takes care of this one. Uh, it looks like, is that the only x to the third power? Why does that seem shocking to me? I don't see any others at a glance. So let's see, x to the fourth, x squared, that would be our x cubed. Uh, did I, I had to have missed one somewhere, so let's see. Um, so bx to the fourth, uh, bx squared, we would have our 3bx cubed, so that's okay. Then 3bx, uh, cx cubed, there we go, uh, plus cx, plus 3c, uh, x squared, and then 3c, okay. So I knew that there had to be more than one, so sorry about that. So we had cx cubed. Just goes to show you got to be really careful. Um, so there we'll take care of our x cubed terms. Again, there's zero x cubes on the left, so I'll just set that equal to zero. Let's look at our x squared terms. Let's see, there's a 2a uh, times x squared. There's a plus b times x squared. Let's see, who else do we have? We've got a plus 3c times x squared. Uh, we've got a plus d times x squared. So I think that'll take care of all of our x squared terms. And the coefficient on the x squared on the left side is going to be positive 1. So let's see, if we take out, uh, if we look at the stuff associated with x, we would have 3b times x. We would have a plus c times x constant, we've got a plus 3d plus e, and I think that takes care of all the x's. And again, there's zero x's on the left, and we should just be left with constants now. So a um, plus 3c plus 3e, all of that equal to the constant on the left, which is going to be positive 2. <clears throat> okay, so Again, this kind of looks terrible, um, but at least we've already figured out one of the values, right? We figured out that a was 11 over 100. So if a equals um, 11 over 100, well, that would tell us that b would have to equal, um, let's see, so a plus b has to equal 0, so b would have to be negative 11 over 100. So at least we have two of them. And now we can use that to solve for c, because we would have 3 times b, which is negative 11 over 100, plus c, that's going to equal 0. So that's negative 33 over 100 plus c. So that would tell us that c would equal, when you add it over, 33 over 100. Let's see, our, uh, can we figure out d pretty easily? I think we can, because now we know a and b and c. So it says we would have 2 times a, which is 11 over 100, plus b, which is negative 11 over 100. Let's see, squeeze this all back in here. Uh, plus 3 times c, so c is 33 over 100. And then plus d, that has to equal 1. Okay, so let's see. This is 22 minus 11, so that's 11. Uh, 11 plus 33, or excuse me, 33. Uh, 3 times 33 is going to be 99. So let's see, we would have 11 over 100, plus this is going to give us 99 over 100, plus D, that has to equal 1. 
So let's see, this is 110 over 100 plus D equals 1. So if we subtract, that would be 100 over 100 minus 110 over 100. So it looks like D is going to equal negative 10 over 100. And I'm just going to leave it. I know we can reduce this. I think I'm going to leave it alone for now. And last but not least, we have to figure out um, the value for E. Um, it looks like the last equation has the fewest terms, so I'm going to use that one. 11 over 100 plus 3 times C, which we said was 33 over 100, uh, plus 3 times E, that has to equal 2. All right, so again, this is uh, 11 plus 99, so we said that's 110 over 100, plus 3E equals uh, 2. So let's see, that's going to be uh, 200 over 100 minus 110 over 100 will be the value for 3E. So if we subtract uh, 200 minus 110, that's going to be 90 over 100. And then we can multiply both sides by one-third to get rid of the 3. So that'll give us, uh, so 90 over 3 will be 30 over 100. So, all right, now we have all of our constants. So now it's a matter of just uh, setting up our integral. <clears throat> so let's see if we can't set it up. I think I'm going to set it up in this one, and then we'll actually finish integrating it in another one. So it said we had a over x plus 3 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1 plus x squared plus 1 squared, and then our dx plus e. So let's see, a was 11 over 100. Our b value, let's see if I can't find the b value, where did it go? All right, our b value is negative 11 over 100x. So bx uh, plus c, we said our c value is 33 over 100. Let's see, plus dx, our d value is negative 10 over 100. Uh, so a, bx plus c, dx plus e. And our E value, we figured that out. We said E was going to be 30 over 100. Again, I know we can reduce these, but I'm just going to leave them alone for the moment. All right, so this is now the uh, function that we're going to integrate. So I think I'm going to stop this one here because it's a little bit getting to be a little long. So, um, But again, you know, the t I think the worst part in these is just figuring out the constants. Um, the integration usually isn't too miserable after that. Um, but... Okay, so we'll leave this one alone here, and we'll pick it up in a separate video.